tips this week are going to be all about cleaning. Cleaning is something that all of us as pet owners have to do, so I feel this will be really beneficial to you. So my tip number one is to spot clean instead of removing all the bedding. Spot cleaning is going to save you so much time and it's going to be a lot more affordable in the long run. So the areas that your small animals pee and poo the most, you want to clean these more regularly. For rabbits and guinea pigs, I suggest doing this on a daily basis. And for smaller animals like hamsters and gerbils, you can use a sandbox. Tip number two is to get kitchen cleaning gloves instead of using the disposable ones. Disposable gloves are quite expensive and they're not really very reusable as they do tend to break and they're not as hard wearing. So I highly suggest you try and use the kitchen gloves. They're also great for keeping your hands a lot warmer in the colder season. Tip number three is to use a cloth instead of kitchen roll. Kitchen roll is quite wasteful and you have to use a lot more than you do with a cloth. It's also not reusable to use kitchen roll, so using a cloth is going to be much more effective and also save you money. Tip number four is to buy in bulk when you get your bedding. This kind of links into the theme of cleaning because it's what you have to clean out every day. So I suggest you buy in bulk, go to your local horse supplier and see what they have. They do really large bales and they are very affordable. When you go to the pet shop, they have tiny little bags and they're very expensive. So it's much better deal to go to your horse supplier and you can get a lot more and it's generally a lot better quality. Here you can see just some of the beddings you can get from your local horse supplier. It costs about five pound up to about seven pound per bag or bale. So they are very affordable and you can get all sorts of different types of bedding for different animals and various different uses. So we've got Megazord which is really absorbent, then beddings similar to Orbeos which make a really nice natural habitat and work well for small animals as well. They also work really well in outdoor habitats as the water soaks straight through and absorbs into the soil. So it's various different uses. Now this is a standard bag which you would find at a pet shop and these can be quite expensive and you only get a tiny amount. So you can see it's much better value to go for something much bigger like this. Tip number five is to try and litter train your animals. Rabbits are really well litter trained and they generally like to urinate in corners so you can opt for a corner litter tray. Guinea pigs actually can be litter trained as well. <laughs> first item is meant to be the top of an Ikea chair or just any chair but if you turn it on its side it makes a really really good hidey house for rabbits and guinea pigs. You can also stand it upright and use it to hold bottles and hay racks and that works really really nicely. Item number two is meant to be a storage rack for inside your cupboard but this works really well as a shelf for any animal. With smaller animals you may want to line it with a piece of wood or you could put a really thick fleece on top and then they can walk on it safely. So this works really really great, the guinea pigs love to hide under it and jump on top of it and it would also work really well for small animals too. Pine cones also work so well for any small animals. You can hide treats in them, they can chew on them and they can play with them. And you can make them into all sorts of different toys. So all you need to do is sanitise them in the oven. Final item this week is wooden logs. Wooden logs are so good for creating a natural habitat and they make it really interesting. They're a great enrichment for small animals 
and you can get them on a bigger scale to use for rabbits and guinea pigs but these ones work really well for hamsters and gerbils and they are just really fun they make their enclosure look really nice and natural and you can just use the ones that you have to go in your log burner So my two very special visitors who will be joining us every single week for this meal opening are two bunnies named Piper and Bigwig. They might be a bit nervous but Piper is very inquisitive so I'm sure she's going to come running straight out. Hello. They're both called Lionhead Rabbits and that's their breed so it means they have more like a mane with a lot of longer hair. So the very first question is from Katie and she asks what are the bunnies favourite vegetables? The rabbits absolutely love carrots and other root vegetables, they really like parsnips and anything which is a root vegetable is always what they go for first. The next question is from Wolfgang and he is asking what do we do if Barry is mean sometimes? So they have two adopted male guinea pigs who generally get on really well and most of the time they do really like each other but sometimes they have an occasional fallout and I think it's important to remember that when you have two guinea pigs together often one of them is going to be a little bit more dominant than the other and this is what they do to establish a hierarchy so one of them may show more dominant behaviours they may teeth chatter <laughs> So make a really loud grinding noise with their teeth. That's just their way of communicating and trying to show they are more dominant. They also sway their bottom around. And sometimes one will jump on top of the other just to show they are in charge. If the guinea pigs are fighting really badly, so they get very injured, if they if blood is drawn, then that is a little bit more serious. But in this scenario, I would say there's nothing to worry about and that's just common guinea pig behaviour. The last question for today is from Elizabetta. Now she has four female guinea pigs who all live together and they live in two cages which are four grids by two grids. Now the grid measurement is quite common in the guinea pig world because a lot of owners keep their guinea pigs in what we call CNC cages. The dimensions of two by four is about 120 by 60 centimeters which is the minimum for two guinea pigs. So I'm about to show you what 120 by 60 centimeters looks like. So 120 is this long and 60 centimetres is this wide. So if you have two of these joined together then you have four guinea pigs living together. This fits the minimum dimensions so it is a suitable size. showing you all some of the pictures which I got sent as well. For a chance to be featured in the next video you can send your pet pictures to petspalacetv at gmail.com you can find that right here. Also feel free to send your questions so don't forget to include your first name and your pet's name as well. Mm -hmm.